time to get everybody in the right mood. I want everybody to follow me in a freedom song. This is a song that Dr. King sang along many, many marches. So I want everybody to feel this when we sing it. All right? Amen. All right. Freedom, oh freedom, over me, over me, and before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in my Come on. Freedom, oh freedom, over me, over me. And before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Now, at this time, we're going to have a song by the Youth in Action Choir. They present tonight. Right. Well, God bless them. We're going to move right along with our program. At this point, we'll have Reverend James Reed Sr., the head of this house, come forth and give his remarks. Reverend Reed. Give it unto our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who said in my life, to all these 
General of the Army, our Lord and Savior, I greet you in our Holy Father's name. And to all of you in your respective places, thank you and we appreciate it. Amen. Um, the conditions are hostile, very hostile. Um, racism is a behavior that has turned into a condition out there because it's something that's been allowed to continue. And the thing about it, they like to get you on a one-on-one -on -one or either a two-on-one -on situation where it's your word against their word. And then when you get in the office, the lies being told that, hey, this didn't happen, when in fact they knew it happened. And then by you standing up, there's retaliation. Um, for example, the union steward approached me after the CLC had came out there, and he approached me and he informed me that I had called someone over the weekend, but yet he couldn't tell me who I called. And then he went into a rage, threatening me and the NAACP, accused me of calling the NAACP after they shut him down. I informed him I did not call the NAACP, but he kept insisting in a raging manner, so I reported to HR they did nothing. Then my supervisor wanted to write an incident report. I informed him that I can write for myself, but he insisted on writing it. So I said, okay. And he proceeded to read back to me what I said allegedly stated. And I informed him that was a lie. And he informed me that I wish I had a tape recorder because you the one that's lying. I said, no, sir, that's a lie. And he stood up at that time and said, no, that's insubordination. You could be five minutes of ordination. I said, okay, do what you got to do. And we went to HR again. He got in front of HR and lied and said it never happened. Another incident. Uh, I'm online. Just had an hour and almost an hour meeting with management. Why, I don't know. Uh, after the meeting, uh, my zone leader informed them that he was going to give me 30 minutes for lunch because they had the meeting through my lunch. And so uh, my Supervisor came out again, enraged, and then he had a female supervisor from the other side of the plant to come with him. They use a technique they teach in management training. It's called provoke the individual, are you, are you the reaction? He, he rushed upon me, his foot touching mine, but she didn't see that. She was watching to see my reaction. Instead of her saying, you are too close on him, you need to back up, she didn't say a word. And he accused me of looking intimidating and not to look at him. And I looked at him anyway. And then he said, you look intimidating. Then she went on to say, yes, that's an intimidating look. I said, well, let's go to the office. We get to the office again, denial. This has been going on ever since the uh, CS, SCS LC came out there on the 30th. I've been going through every day, different things, threats, um, talking to a third party, we're sitting at the table. Um, they hold a conversation such as, if we find out, they say, oh, no, I'm sitting there, but they make the comment, if we find out who this individual is, we're going to uh, walk him out or either carry him out. Or uh, in the bathroom, like for example, today, they knew I was in the restroom, came to my, we need to kill this brother. I said, okay, no problem. But yet when you get in front of management with this, they deny and say they didn't say it. And so it's your word against their word. And like I told them, I'm not about playing games. I'm not going to get up and say, you said this and I said that because that's too childish and too immature. Be a man and fess up. I'm a man, you be a man. And the conditions are something else, a treatment. But all of this, like I told them, in due time, this will come out in court, which I'm praying that it do go to court because all the people I supposed to be intimidated, I got the right to face my accuser, even though they say I don't. Because every individual they accuse me of harassing or scared of me, they can't give me a name, they can't give me a face, and they can't tell me who the individual is. Again, these are childish games, these are fear tactics that's being used that need to be stopped. And I told on the job, I fear no man. So I'm not the one that you should be talking to. Because truly, I don't fear no man, what man can do to me. Because my Lord and Savior is the head of my life. Amen. And I told them over and over, it's for us. And they don't understand that. It's me, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And I 
including me. I'm not afraid of what they're throwing at me or what I've been going through. Because I, even though I know they're going to have to, they're going to deny it, but when we get in court, they're going to have to come up with these people's names. And they're going to have to come up with what I allegedly said or allegedly done to these people. And I just leave it in the hand of the Lord and I thank you for your prayers and your support because I know my God is able. And I know that I am more than a conqueror. Amen. And I, I, if we all are trying to go to heaven and I'm not going to do nothing to get off track. Thank you. Amen. The, uh, the last meeting I had with upper management, like I said, I, I had about 12 meetings, and out of the 12, seven of them was hostile. But this particular meeting on November the 14th was with upper management. Uh, they came down, and I used my badge to go into the meeting. And when I came out of the meeting, my badge didn't work. They told me that they changed the code um, I asked a question, I said, if you change the code while I was in the meeting, why is everybody else bad working? They couldn't tell me. And for a whole week and two days, I didn't have, I just had to pretend I was punching in. They just only gave me a badge to get, get, get through the door. I couldn't uh, clock in. I just stood in line so people can see me standing in line so they can't say I wasn't there. But then you go, you know, things like this, it tells us we have trouble all around us. Oh, yes. I look at it this way. If I didn't have no trouble, oh. I'm in trouble. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to remind everybody that Dr. King once said, a threat to justice anywhere it's a threat to justice yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And this is our everywhere. Yeah. Right? Let's yeah. keep that on our mind as we proceed forward. Uh, imagine. Okay, I just was informed that our youth connection has made it in. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So at this time, we're reversing our program and go back to the section where our Youth in Action Choir will uh, make a song at this moment. Yeah. Uh,
song. We're going to go forward. It's the representative from the National Action Network here tonight. Come on, brother. Introduce yourself. Amen. Church, say amen. Say amen. amen again. Amen. 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 Uh, we stand, uh, I, I'm uh, Reverend K.B. Martin, pastor of the Antioch Baptist Church here in the city of Augusta, amen. and also uh, a member of the board of directors of the National Action Network uh, and leader uh, in this area uh, of the country. We just thank God tonight. We, we came just as a support. Uh, of uh, President Smith and President Ivory uh, in their effort uh, to let the community know that we stand together. Uh, the uh, NAACP, the N, uh, uh, SCLC, and the National Action Network, uh, we're standing together, we're working together to let people know that these things will not be tolerated. Uh, I'm sure that when uh, President Ivory comes, he's going to share with you some of the things that we were faced when we went to uh, John Deere uh, in terms of them uh, refusing to let all of us come in and sit down uh, and uh, talk with them and dialogue. Uh, with them using the same tactics. They brought a black fella down from Moline uh, to talk to us, amen, and they would not talk with all of us together, amen, using those kinds of tactics. What Reverend Reed is going through should not be tolerated in this day and time. Amen. But what we've got to understand uh, is that even though uh, we've got an African-American president, the mindset of the people in the South had changed. That's right. That's right. Amen. And it's still to oppress us. Uh -huh. And the techniques that they're using uh, in effort to get uh, Reverend Reed, uh, they've already got one person fired Come on, uh, with the same technique. Uh -huh. uh, and Reverend Reed just had enough Jesus uh -huh. not to get caught up in it uh -huh. and to walk away from it. Uh, but you do have to understand that Reverend Reed is a minister of Christ, but he's also a man. Yeah, right. Help me somebody. Yeah, right. Ain't but so much. Amen. Yeah, right. yeah, right. And, and, and we may have to cancel the prayer meeting. Yeah, right. yeah, amen. But let us continue to work together, to stand together uh, with uh, uh, our African American brothers and sisters at John Deere. Amen. And let John Deere know because they promised no retaliation. Amen. And we've got to let them know that we will not tolerate these kinds of actions against our people. Amen. God bless you. And like I said, we're just here in support of SCLC and everything and every action that they take. Amen. Amen. See if Sister Alice Williams is in the house tonight. Uh -huh. Sister Williams, if you would please grace us with your melodious voice at this time. We'd appreciate it. Amen. Just have a big hand for Sister Alice Williams. Oh, I like that. Put them up high on the pedestal. I like that. Yeah. Let's give a hundred cigar. Who is the head of my life? And I'm proud to say that he is. Because when I look back over my life, I know that anybody do it but the Lord. Amen. See, I know a lot of y'all don't know anything here about picking cotton. I know a lot of y'all don't know about shucking, I mean, uh, 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 corn and uh, um, peanuts, you know, and, and uh, don't deny y'all know about, you know, when you be out there in there uh, picking cotton, you know, you go to the white man's store. Mm -hmm. And uh, the only thing was good back that day was some bologna and a honey bun, uh, you know. But y'all don't know nothing about that. <laughs> See, y'all don't know what, we done came a long ways. And you know what? It still isn't over. It might be done pepped up a little bit, but it's still, the same thing still going. 
But only thing is, we got a little bit more freedom than we had back then. And you know, but when you look back over your life, ain't nobody do it, did it but the Lord. Amen. And the Lord still is doing this. And what we need to do is come together as one. Ain't no big you and, uh, and, and uh, everybody out on this side. We got to come together as one and start working together. And I thank God that we got a black president. Mm -hmm. And we got to learn, we got to support him all to make things better for us. Can I get an amen on that? You know, we... Huh? All right, that's what I'm talking about. Young men, too. Look over there, over there. Number a bunch of young men. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead on... I was uh, asked to do this. And uh, I'm just giving it to the Lord about a change going to come. Right. Y'all believe a change is going to come? Yeah. If we just keep on doing what we're supposed to do and stick together and start keep on looking up towards heaven where our help come, the change is going to come. And you know when Obama was elected president, you know what I said? I said, Lord, I thank you for allowing me to right. see the first black president. Right. Right. And, and I thank the Lord for letting me hear Y'all told me to do a song. He told me to get me and start talking. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. God is good, yes he is. Yeah. God is good, he's good, he's good. <laughs> yes he is, Lord. <laughs> Did you know that song, baby? <laughs> all right. I'm, I'm doing all this little run and all this. Okay, hear me. <laughs> amen. Let's give God a hand, baby. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. I was born by the river in a little tent. Oh, I, I've been running everything. It's been a long. Oh, no. 
Dr. King said one time that uh, you can never be what you ought to be until I am what I ought to be. All right. And I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. Uh -huh. That's the interrelated structure of reality. We must depend on each other. Okay. All right. And I'm glad tonight that uh, it doesn't matter how many come, but get the word out that we will not go back. In 1970, a uh, guy I grew up with uh, got hanged in jail, and we feel as though that it was done by uh, some people that lived there. So you see, it's not over. All right. We are going to reopen that case okay. before I leave here. Okay. And I want you all to know that it was him then, all right. okay. and somebody just Put the news on somebody's neck here tonight. Okay. All right. But the next time it might be a brother in the tree. All right. 
You can't have that. We want to thank you all for coming out. And I'm here to do my job as long as I can. Because before James does anything, uh, we always talk about having a fact-finding mission. We come back, we get the facts, and then we send it to our national office. We don't ever get out there unless we have a fact-finding mission. All right, all right. And facts will follow you all the way to the Supreme Court, and you got to be victorious. Amen. So I want to thank you all for coming out, and very happy to see you all here. And I want to encourage you to continue to support this effort because it might be your son or your daughter. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Yes, and he just spoke the truth. It could be your son, your daughter, or you. We need to take advantage of this opportunity to make sure that this does not persist. And at this time, we're going to have President James Ivory of the Jefferson County Chapter of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. chapter tagged with pleas of help from African Americans employed at the John Deere Plant 4000, Grovetown, Georgia. After hearing the complaints, our chapter launched a fact-finding mission. After our mission was completed, we sent a copy of that completion to our national office in Atlanta, Georgia. And we also sent a copy to the John Deere National Office in Moline, Illinois. Now, during our fact-finding mission, I began to take mental leaps. I took a mental leap back into time. There I traveled along the Underground Railroad and I had a talk with Harriet Tubman. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. <laughs> and she said to me, Mr. Ivory, yes, a long time ago, yes, I helped a lot of slaves yeah. escape to freedom. I, mm -hmm. I could have helped a lot more, yeah. All right. mm. but they were afraid. Okay. Mm -hmm. I took another mental leap. And I found myself aboard a huge cargo ship loaded with slaves bound for America. And one of the slaves walked up to me and he said he stood tall with 
fearlessness written all over his face. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, me na ba aba feeli is a gila e zombie na which means before I be a slave in the Zulu language, I'll be buried in my grave. Yeah. And he jumped yeah. overboard. Yeah. I <laughs> took another mental leap. Mm -hmm. And I found myself in heaven. There I sat down and I had a talk with Martin Luther King Jr. All right. All right. Amen. Amen. And he said to me, my brother, the only thing that you're challenged to do is to keep this movement moving, keep this movement rolling, in spite of the difficulties. Keep climbing. If you can't fly, run. If you can't run, walk. If you can't walk, crawl. But by all means, keep this movement moving. Amen. You must be about your father's business. Okay. I took another mental leap and I found myself talking with the almighty God of Isaac, Abraham, and Jacob. Right. And he said unto me, my son, my child, you have been chosen from the foundation of the world for such a time as this. Amen. You have been ordained to stand up and fight for freedom, fight for justice, fight for equality in America. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah. On September 27, 2008, I took up the office of president of the Justin County Georgia chapter of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Myself and others took a solemn oath to carry on the ongoing fight and struggle for freedom, justice, and equality in Jefferson County and throughout the whole land of the United States of America. Amen. The Jefferson County chapter of the SCLC have put on the helmet of salvation. Amen. We have put on the breastplate of righteousness. Mm -hmm. We have girded our waist with the truth and shouted our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen. Yeah. Therefore, when racism, hate crime, discrimination, and injustice raises its ugly head, the Jefferson County, Georgia chapter of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference will not hesitate to take up the mighty, mighty sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, to the victims of these evils. All right. Be not afraid, for God is with you. The Jefferson County, Georgia chapter of the Southern Christian Leadership will stand with you. We will fight with you. We will march with you. We will suck with you because you are not just any African American. You are first class citizen of the United States of America. Amen. Amen. To the perpetrators of these evils, we are not standing out of the by and watching you torture our children and disrespect our black women. Oh, all right, all right, all right. We are not standing out of the by and allowing you to continuously ride our backs. Because we are standing up straighter and taller than ever. We are standing together. We are standing together than ever. We are standing together than ever. We are standing together than ever. We are standing together more than ever. You might as well know and understand that. This is as much as our land as it is yours. Gone are the days of discrimination and oppression, hate crimes and Jim Crow, lynchings, injustice, and police brutality. 
Open your eyes, perpetrators. Look at the big picture and govern yourselves because those days are gone. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately tonight, the Honorable Dr. Charles Steele, Jr., President and CEO of the National SCLC, had a scheduling conflict, so he will not be present at this time. However, he has sent in his capacity the attorney, Mr. Dexter Wimbish, who is General Counsel of the National SCLC. Please give me a hand in welcoming him. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. First, giving thanks to my God and Savior Jesus Christ. All right. Second, I want to say hello to all those who are here to support our efforts and support SCLC stand to demand that justice is done here in Augusta. All right. Thirdly, I want to say hello to those who are sitting in the pews who've been sent here by others to find out what's going on. <laughs> you can take this message back to me. Change is no longer on the way. Change is here. All right. Now for the last 18 months, people have been fighting against this notion of change. Letting us, leading us to believe that America has changed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the scourge of racism and hatred has been cashed out. But we're here tonight to say we are a long ways from being the same. All right. All right. America is still sick. Yes. I remember Barack's comment that if you put Lipstick on a pig. Come on. Yeah, all right. All right. All right. It's still a pig. All right. Oh, yeah. And I'm here to tell you if you take a rope okay. and put 13 circle of cords around their rope. Now you can call it a lasso. Uh -huh. All right. But it's still a noose. Amen. All right. All right. All right. All right. Come on. You can call it a joke. Mm -hmm. All right. But it's for real. Amen. All right. Now there's a spirit in here. Uh -huh. Spirits. Now, now they, they do this to me all the time. Our president and CEO, Dr. Charles Steele, has scheduling conflicts. Mm. And they call that in my office and say, Dr. Steele got a scheduling conflict. You need to go somewhere and speak with Dr. Steele. Mm -hmm. All right. I get set up. <laughs> I was coming down here to talk to the victims so we can talk about how we craft a legal strategy to address this All issue. Right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right.